going back five or six years ago when digital video started to really scale, uh, there was a, a, uh, a chasm in the marketplace, if you will, where some agencies were aligning with VCE or Comscore and others were aligning with Nielsen. And the same thing happened on the publisher side. And publishers were making a decision of who to align with based on the agencies they were, they were aligning with, if you will. So that, uh, that created an issue because you had two different measurement forms out there and you had 50% or so of the marketplace lining with one way and another. So lack of uniformity was, has, has been a barrier for sure. Uh, FEP players, full episode players at the time, made it possible for buyers to, on one buy, buy linear television as well as have a portion of that on digital video or on the full episode player and that was one buy same cpm and one post campaign report so it made it easier uh, but since then there's still a lot of barriers that exist why this is taking so long i think some in some cases old habits die young people are used to buying media a certain way and if the path isn't clear there's a reluctance to, you know for change particularly with the, the way you have you have a portion of your buy based on 2554, the linear portion, adults 2554 is one example, and then another portion and a growing portion that's based on persons two plus. So you have, you know, it's a tough, it's a tough element to to combine those two, and you're you're uh, you're using TV like VPVHs and applying them to a two plus audience, and it's just not an exact science. So there's still a disagreement today uh, on who's more qualified to buy video, digital buyers or TV buyers. Digital buyers will tell you that they have more targeting expertise and experience, and TV buyers will tell you, I can get it for cheaper, I can drive a better deal, and the economics make sense. And the answer is it's probably a little bit of both. The people who work together uh, usually have the most success, uh, but that is a dynamic. I walk into advertising agencies every week. And, and whenever I'm in front of an investment group, I ask who buys the OTT, and I'll get a variety of different answers. And sometimes within the same agency, sometimes it's all the TV buyers buy all video. In other cases, it's case by case. Uh, in many in many cases, digital digital buyers are still buying the OTT, but it is uh, it's an ongoing. Uh, I don't know if I'd call it turf war, but it's an ongoing element that exists within agencies, uh, which. Um, is still sorting itself out. Better than it was three or four years ago, but definitely room for improvement for sure. Companies like NVIDIA, NVIDIA empowers all of our addressable technology, uh, make it easier for buyers to place a TV buy and it may have it feel more digital-like. And what I mean by that is the targeting, the measurement, the back-end attribution is there, particularly with addressable. Uh, so you're seeing you're seeing the melding of those two worlds uh, through companies like NVIDIA and, 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 and players like that. But it's, it's the players who t to take the holistic view of their of their video uh, buy uh, and embrace the difference and use use different portions of it to complement one another. You buy linear to 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 reach uh, the largest mass you can. It's becoming more and more difficult to achieve true critical mass reach. Your reach curve is typically topping out at 60-70% of your desired audience. Uh, the, one of the reasons for that is just fragmentation. The proliferation of, of fragmentation in the marketplace has, has limited the ability for linear TV to achieve true mass reach. You're typically topping out around 60-70%. So it's the player who knows that, but who's going to use more data-driven video, whether that be data-driven linear, whether that be addressable, or OTT for that matter, to supplement that 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 initial reach established by 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 linear TV, and to grow that 60, 70 reach, you can literally grow that up to 90, 95 percent by using the two in conjunction with one another. Yeah, I don't know if there's a silver bullet answer to that question, but I do know that addressable advertising is at the corner, the, the crossroads of digital and TV. It allows a marketer to specifically target an audience and, like digital, eliminate the waste and only target the intended audience at the household level. And it gives you insights to better targeting, better measurement, and maybe most importantly, back-end attribution. 
there's been uh, not one significant announcement, but there's been numerous that I, I've seen, and there's been a, a growing buzz in the marketplace about the uh, increased involvement of data-driven television in the broadcast year, broadcast up front this year. That includes data-driven linear or index buying, and that was part of the last couple up fronts. But more than anything, addressable advertising, I'm hearing, is going to be a, play a much bigger role within the broadcast up front. And that really aligns with another trend we're seeing is addressable advertising becoming part of the front end of the strategic planning process. So in the past, it's been used in a more a reactive way and added on, where now you're seeing a lot of marketers, particularly within finance, auto, and retail, who are bringing addressable, and there's an addressable line in the budget on the, on the front end of the process. Uh, so when you see that, you're seeing more of, of, an, of, of a, a larger group of marketers embracing it, uh, as opposed to it being a test or an add-on. It's actually becoming a line item on the front end.